Hey, how are you doing? What a crazy start to the year we've all had so far, right? It almost feels like a dream. Who knew our life and world world would still look like this after an entire year of lockdown, a pandemic and restrictions, right? 2020 wasn't easy at all. I personally found myself in situations where I had to deal with lots of disappointments and uh, frustrations um, in with how the world was operating. For example, we had a situation where my, uh, with my mom's visa process to come and live here in the UK with us and because she lived in Iran and it almost took her an entire year to get her visa and on the way, in the whole process of waiting, we faced so many disappointments and frustrations one after another and it was even more frustrating that we couldn't get together as a family and be there for each other in person. And I'm sure you also have faced a lot of challenges and disappointments, not only once or twice, but many times. And maybe this year you couldn't even see your grandparents or go to school as normal or see your friends properly. Like so many others, you probably entered survival mode as well and after a while were so fed up with the never-ending changes to the restrictions. But the good news is that you got through it. So well done. I know it hasn't been easy and ideal, but you've made it. So well done. The great news is this isn't it. There is more to our life and our journey with God than just getting through a pandemic. God has has and wants more for us. This year could be the best year and time of your life with God yet. And I know it's a big statement, but it could be. You got through an entire year of pandemic and survived. And in fact, if you look back, you can see that it has made you stronger and more resilient. This year may bring new challenges to face or tough situations to deal with, but it will also bring lots of new opportunities to learn, grow and develop because that's how life is. In the Bible, we read a lot uh, where God says, don't be afraid for I am with you. No matter how hard or good your life has been or maybe still is, Remember that God is with you in the night, in your emptiness, in your dark and lonely moments, as well as in your joy, in your hope and in your purpose. God is with you. His presence is hovering over you. So why not focus on that? Why not shift your focus from how weird and crazy this time our life is to getting stronger and making this year and this season the best time of your life with God yet. Prophet Isaiah in chapter 54 verse 2 says, Enlarge the plains of your tent. Stretch your curtains, uh, tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. To give you a bit of context to the book, This book is the first and longest prophetic book in the Bible and it focuses on the Messiah, the anointed servant king who is coming to redeem, save and bring a new covenant of peace to all nations. I wonder how many of you have been camping. Do you hate it or do you love it? I personally, I'm not a big fan of it. You probably have also experienced tripping over a guy rope in the dark, right? You probably had some um, ha- had to set, uh, set up a tent at some point, or have seen someone uh, setting it up. P- maybe at Soul Survivor, or at other summer, summer festivals on a normal day, or maybe on a camping trip with your parents. So, Prophet Isaiah is not talking here about the small tents that we use for camping now, but he is talking about the Bedouin tents, which are the old-fashioned, uh, old-fashioned tents. So to enlarge an old-fashioned biblical era tent, the more the tent is enlarged by lengthening the cords by which the cloth covering is fastened to the ground, the more the stakes supporting the tent need to be uh, strengthened. So Isaiah had this process in mind when he compared the prophetic prosperity of Israel to a Bedouin tent. But what does it have to do with us today? In order to grow, we need to be stretched. 
it isn't easy, but it means you're growing. It's great. It's good news. In order to grow, we need to put some uh, stakes in place to help us get stronger. And for that, I have three seeds. These are your stakes that would help you get stronger and be more strengthened. So the first C is communion. We are called to live in communion with Christ and it is in his presence that we find rest. When your body is tired, you need to rest, to recharge. Otherwise, your tiredness can cause making poor decisions. Instead, a rest can help you fo- refocus on what is important. In Matthew 11, D- Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My question for you is, how are you going to pursue rest and communion with Christ this year? Could you add a day of rest and Sabbath into your week to grow in rest this year? Could you turn on the screen limit on your phone and read the scripture for after a certain time? Or maybe you want to just sit down in in the presence of God in silence for an hour and find rest in the presence of God like that, that way. So that was our first C, communion. The second C is community. We are also called to live in community. For example, when I was in the process of the whole process of waiting for my mom's visa and we were facing so many frustrations and challenges, I was surrounded by a brilliant community who supported me all the way through uh, that time of waiting with uh, their prayers and with their encouragement and voice messages, sending me like lovely, sweet messages. And yeah, and and their support gave me strength to keep going and and keep getting through this year. So we are made to live in community, to love one another, as Jesus says, as uh, Jesus is in the Bible. And and yeah, Apostle Paul in 1 Thess- Thessalonians chapter 5 also says, encourage one another and build each other up. So my question for you is, could it be that this year you would grow in how to love one another better? Maybe you'd want to commit to pray for 14 days for a friend who is struggling or dealing with something tough during this time. Or you want to, again, maybe you want to start sending them voice messages to encourage them and pray for them. So that was our second C, community. community. So far we talked about two C's, that being in communion with Christ and being in community strengthen us. Our last C is commission, which is you because you are called to be a commission into the world. So how can you see these strengths and share them? How can you use these strengths and share them with others? I want to commission you now to go and use these strengths. Maybe you want to, you need to use these uh, strengths to forgive your friends who've hurt you before, or to be bold in share and share your faith with uh, friends, or maybe tell them about what, you, what is it about Jesus that you love? Or maybe you want to invite them to church or your youth group uh, one day. Maybe you also want, uh, you need to say no to an unhealthy habit or choice. And whatever it is, why don't you take a moment with me to write it down on a piece of paper? What does it look like for you to practice your strength in every area of your life? What can you do intentionally this year and during this time to live the best time of your life with God yet?